Hey everybody, in this video we are going to learn about polar coordinates. So polar coordinates are another coordinate system to represent points in space. And why it's different and why we are interested in it is because of how it works. It has to do with more so rotating to get to a point in space. And so you have an ordered pair. The first number r, the second number theta. r is going to be a distance. So it is the distance from the origin to that point. The second number, theta, is an angle. It's the angle that you have to sweep out from an initial ray, or in this case, the positive x-axis. And so this is how you find a point that's given in polar coordinates. You start with the x-axis, or the initial ray, and then you know some angle theta. So theta will be given, and you'll say, okay, I need to make an angle of that degree or that radian measure and then once I know how big that angle is I go from the origin some distance so maybe like a distance of two or three and then that's where you plot your point point. and why polar coordinates are very interesting is because they allow you to rotate to get to points in space instead of with Cartesian coordinates where you would have to like form rectangles you have to go up and over and up and over this one you can rotate and then move forward and backward. So here is an example of a co polar coordinate system. So just like you had in the past an xy plane that you would graph on, this is the polar coordinate system. So what you have is angles. So you, this is like maybe if you've got polar graph paper, you would see something like this. You have angles that are usually marked. The, some of the standard ones are pi over 6. This one would be pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2, and so on. And then all these concentric circles are of different radii. So if I knew my angle was, let's say, for example, pi over 6, I would stop somewhere on this angle measure. And if I knew my radius should be 4, then I would go along this angle measure and I would stop right here at radius 4. And that would be how I locate that point in space. So polar coordinates, they're not unique. So if I have a point in space, like right here, Here's just two of many ways to find this point. The first one, we can say if we start on the positive x-axis and sweep out an angle of pi over 6, and then move from the origin a distance of 2 away, we can land at that point. But another way to get there is to start at the positive x-axis, and then sweep out an angle of negative 11 pi over 6, and then from the origin sweep out an angle of uh, distance of 2. A quick reminder, when your angles are negative, it just means that you are traveling clockwise. Here's a different example. So if you notice where your point is, it's right here. And so this point, we can find this one of many ways, is to sweep out an angle of 7 pi over 6. And then from the origin, our radius is 2 again, so go out a distance of 2. Another way to do this, though, and this part's new, let's say I only use an angle of pi over 6. Well, that would put me right here, and then a distance of 2 would be here. But if I put a negative sign in front of my radius, it actually just tells us the following. That's, this is what the negative radius represents. It means that we are 180 degrees away from where we stopped. So we go basically through the origin, and then the other direction, or 180 degrees away. That's what a negative radius represents. Here's a different example, actually back to our original, another way to represent the same point though. So we already talked about when we had an angle of pi over 6, but let's use an angle of 7 pi over 6 to land here again. This is like a point in quadrant 1. If I use my angle of 7 pi over 6, I would stop exactly 180 degrees away from where I need to be. So then if I put a negative sign on my radius, I would know I have to go through the origin and to the other direction or 180 degrees away and I would land at that point. Very similarly I can use a negative radius and a negative angle. So I can sweep out a negative 5 pi over 6, land over here, and then put a negative sign on my radius and it will put me two away from the origin in this direction. So lots of ways to represent the same points in space. Now polar equations are really interesting, especially when you're talking about circles, because look how nice this is. The polar equation for a circle is just r equals a, where a is the radius. So anytime you just see r equals a number in polar form, it's just a circle. 
Whatever the radius is, that's what number r equals. So very fast and nice way to write equations for circles. So let's look at this example. Graph the set of points that satisfy r is greater than or equal to 1 but less than or equal to 2. And then the angle is between 0 and pi over 2. So if you separate this, you can say that you want a circle with radius 1, you want a circle with radius 2, but you want all the points in between. But then you also only want a certain angle measure that you want to sweep out. So let me show you um, using a graphing website, and then we'll jump right back into this. So here we're going to plot two circles, one with radius 1. Then I want another circle with radius 2, and then that's what we have here. And so the inequality we were given is that r is between 1 and 2. So we actually want all the points in between 1 and 2. But what we also have to consider is that the angle measure here for an entire circle, it goes from 0 to 2 pi. And we were told not to go from 0 to 2 pi. We were told to stop at pi over 2, which would be 100, um, right up here at 90 degrees. So let's see what that looks like. So here it is. It's just this, like rainbow type half shape um, where we have all the values of a circle with between radius 1 and 2 to include the edges because there was equal signs on our inequalities and then we only wanted to go from an angle of 0 up to an angle of pi over 2. So that is the shape of this graph. Let's try this one. Graph the set of points that satisfy r between negative 3 and positive 2 and then one specific angle value, pi over 4, or you can say 45 degrees. So this one's a little different because we only have one single angle value. So when we sweep out the angle pi over 4, we basically need to go to a distance of 2 away from the origin, but then also a distance of 3 away, 180 degrees away from where we landed. And so what that looks like is a line. And so we sweep out this angle of pi over 4, from the origin we would go out 2, but then the negative sign on this 3 over here, we would go from the origin 3 the other direction. And then everything in between satisfies these conditions. So here is how you relate polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. Cartesian coordinates are the coordinates you learned the first time you learned how to graph, which is x and y. So if you have a point right here in space and it's x comma y, you can find this point using r comma theta if you just use these relationships up here. So these four things are very good to reference and to have handy. Now where do they come from? Well, they come from trig and what we know about triangles. So if I know the x value here and the y value to give me this point, if I were to use rectangles, I can form a right triangle and then this angle that's in that triangle, I know from trig that cosine of that angle is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So if I solve for x, I get x equals r cosine theta. And then very similar reasoning for how you get that y is r sine theta. And then r squared is just from the Pythagorean theorem. This side squared plus this side squared is your radius squared. So if you want r, you just take that square root. And then this last part over here, if you ever need to find theta, like let's say you're working in Cartesian coordinates, but you need to go to polar coordinates. If you need to find theta, you can use tangent. So you could say tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent or y over x. Now one quick note to mention here, you do have to reference or figure out which quadrant your point is in to begin with because of tangent inverse and how it's defined. So here's what I'm talking about. Let's say my point that I was wanting is not here in quadrant one, but it's over here in quadrant three. Well, if I know x and y, and I use the tangent inverse button on my calculator, what that would do is it would give me an angle measure right here in quadrant 1. And so what you would have to do is just, if you knew that your point was actually over here, supposed to be in quadrant 3, you would just add um, pi or 180 to that angle measure, and it would land you right in this quadrant. So just be aware of that when you're using the tangent inverse button on a calculator. So some curves are easier to express using polar coordinates, but some are not. So why we are learning about polar coordinates is because sometimes, like we've just been working with, equations are easier, like circles. So, um, but not always, Cartesian equations might be easier. So for example, r cosine theta equals 2 is equivalent 
to x equals 2. And this one might be more intuitive for you. This is just a vertical line. Another example, r squared cosine theta times sine theta equals 4 is x times y equals 4. Some more examples, r squared cosine squared theta minus r squared sine squared theta equals 1. Well, if we rewrote this using our relationship between polar and Cartesian, you would just have x squared minus y squared equals 1. But how about this one? Look at how this equation looks in polar, r equals 1 minus cosine theta, and look how it looks in Cartesian. So here's that part where maybe polar is easier to express this curve than Cartesian coordinates would be, but you can switch back and forth when you need to. So let's try this example. We are going to find a polar equation for this circle. x squared plus y minus 3 quantity squared equals 9. And so if you recall with circles, this would be centered at 0, 3, and then it always equals the radius squared, so that would be 3. So this is the circle, just a drawing for you. But let's go to polar form. So what we're going to do is we're going to simplify the way this looks a little bit and then use our relationships that we mentioned from going from polar to Cartesian. So if I just FOIL this quantity out with y minus 3 squared, we get y squared minus 6y plus 9. Let's subtract 9 from both sides. And then we'll use our relationships between polar and Cartesian. So Everywhere there is an x, I can put an r cosine theta. Everywhere there's a y, I can put an r sine theta. But anytime you already see an x squared plus a y squared, what would be easier is if you just replace it with r squared. So let's do that. And then right here with this y, we'll say r sine theta. So we have r squared minus 6r sine theta equals 0. We can factor out an r. And then we have a product that equals 0. So then either r equals 0 or r minus 6 sine theta equals 0. And so this would be r equals 6 sine theta. Now why I only kept this version of the answer is because this one actually encompasses r equals 0. So if you were to plug in, let's say, 0 for theta, r would be 0. So this answer actually encompasses this answer as well. Okay, last one. Let's write an equivalent Cartesian equation for this polar equation. So we're pretty much doing the opposite of what we just did. We're starting with a polar equation. We're going to go to Cartesian using our relationships. So the first thing I'm going to actually do is just not have to deal with this fraction anymore. So multiply both sides by the denominator. Then let's go ahead and distribute the r. Then we can look at what we know about the relationship between polar and Cartesian coordinates. So what we have here, notice, is an r cosine theta, and we also have an r sine theta, so we get to replace those really quickly with just x and y. And that's it. Let's just make it look a tiny bit nicer. And so we have y equals 2x minus 4. So this one in Cartesian form probably looks familiar. You might recognize this is just a line with slope 2. In polar form, not so familiar. So sometimes um, when you switch back and forth, it might be easier to figure out what the graph actually looks like. So that is it for polar coordinates. All right.